First Chronicles chapter 17. And we got a wonderful unimaginative uh, tale here of David. The chapter starts off, David is in his castle of cedars. Looking out his window, he sees the Lord dwelling in a tent. As the Lord has always dwelt in the tent, the tabernacle. And David in his heart set upon God, this is not right. I'm in more majesty than God of majesties, God of greatness, the God of my fathers. And he declares that I'm going to build God a house. And God comes to Nathan. He says, no, you're not going to do it. You're a man of blood. But I'm going to promise you a great thing above what you wanted. I'm going to build you a house, David. And we will see that the throne of David and the house of David will be passed on to the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 2. And we're going to read verse 16. We're going to re read and go back and get the video or the uh, uh, audio on 1 Corinthians 17. And we're going to read the response of David and what David never expected God to do. At this point, David knows he's unable to build a house for the Lord. And in verse 16, in David the king will have a king of kings, the Lord Jesus Christ, came and sat before the Lord. Was that interesting? Some people teach, you got to kneel before the Lord when you pray. Wherever David went, before the Lord, I don't know if it's out where that tent is, the tabernacle. I don't know if he's sitting in his window looking at the tabernacle, but he, he comes down and sits down. And he's got that relationship with God, like, pull up a seat, God. And that Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, is Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God doesn't say, David, get down on your knees. And he said, who am I, O Lord God? <laughs> Wait a minute, God. You just completely verse what I wanted to do. I wanted to build you a sure house. I wanted to build you a strong house. I want to build you a house of beauty for the beauty of God that you are. And God said, uh, no, you're not going to do it, but I'm going to give you a surety of your family. And we read that about Solomon in verse 11 and verse 12. That Solomon has the same attributes that a Christian today has. He is a child of God. And you can't lose that. And that would be a form of adoption because God is not the, the physical father of David or Solomon. That would be adoption of Solomon as God has adopted us. Solomon and David are the, their father the devil, John 8, 44, though not written yet in the time that we are reading. What is my house? Now, now look at the... Look at the, the points of verse 17. It's about a house. God, my house is so splendor. Yours is not. It's a tent. Well, David, you can't build me a house, but I'm going to build your house. David, wait a minute. Uh, God. Now this house, what we studied in verse 17, 1 to 15, is not a building. So in other words, if you were to say, God's going to build David house, you can't get over in your airplane and your taxi or bus and go over to Holy Land and see David's house. It's not there. It's family. Joshua said, as for me and my house will serve the Lord. You mean the door, the windows, the walls, the roof, chimney, the floors, the walls? Absolutely not. And when we come to the thing of the, the church today, oh, the, the magnificent church, the great church, the mega church, and what they're talking about is the wood, the stone, the plaster, the glass, and that's not a church. And the fact is, if you have a mega church, and majority of people in that church are unsaved, it's not a church. It's a house all the way back from the time of the law of David. It's been people. 
Don't worry about the mega churches. Few that be in them are a church. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. I guarantee in those churches there are a church. The church. And they will be divided if the rapture would happen during the during the service. It will divide who's the church and who's not the church. There's a lot of church buildings today if the Lord were to come on a church night. They would go on singing, they would go on preaching, they would go on inventory at the altar service, and they would come out of the church service and realize that no one disappeared with the word church on, on the sign in the front of their building. And not one person would probably go up from that building, that group of people. But the house are people that thou has brought me hitherto. David gets a complete spin on life here. David has taken the, the tent and the cedars. And God has said, your son and your son's sons. David has taken the physical thing of a building. And God has said, no, 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 no. People, soul, Solomon. We're going to see Solomon in heaven one day. We're going to see David in heaven one day. David's a little baby that died. We're going to see that baby in heaven one day. And yet, this was a small thing in thy eyes. My family, the family of Jesse. What is the family of, J of Jesse, David, and Solomon? Of all the world of the people, of all the world of the people that ever to be. Oh God. Now see, that's not an expression of, you know, uh, 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 so not always, oh, you know, fear, dread, trouble. Oh, God, what on earth? Are you? It's an explanation of, wow. For thou hast also spoken, word of God, word of God, spoken, word of God. Of thy servant, that's David's house, for a great while to come. And he's taking the date, 1042 B.C. here, at least. 1,070 years to Jesus Christ is born of Mary, adopted by Joseph of the family of David, Matthew 1, Luke chapter 2, or 3. I forget which, 2 or 3. And then you add 1,000 years to that when Jesus Christ, excuse me, add 2,000 uh, 2, years of minimum, and then you add 7 years when Jesus Christ will be seated, 1,007 years, ch church age, uh, the tribulation period, and then the millennium of a thousand years of David's throne being given to Jesus Christ, one that David's never met, to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. And according to Matthew chapter 1, Jesus Christ is in this line, this family. The virgin birth called out, O earth, 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 write this man child. It has to be the virgin birth that Isaiah will speak about. He has spoken thy servant's house for a great while to come. People. David's got the point now. It's not a house. It's the people. And has regarded me according to thy estate. That's the first time that word shows up. Estate of a man of high degree. O Lord God. I'm a king. This is my kingdom. This is my estate. God, you've honored this position. You, you've given me this position. You, I've had to fight many years, King Saul, but this is where I am today. And you promised me this kingdom now forever and ever. Now watch David go to the third person. What can David speak more to thee, God, for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. God knows who we are. God knows our heart. God's looking upon the heart of David. David comes third person. Like, what? It's almost like David's standing there looking at himself saying him? <laughs> that man right there, God, you know that man right there. Long before the adultery and murders happened in David's life. David looks at himself saying, God, who am I? What am I? I'm a sinner. O oh Lord, he says, O oh God, O oh Lord, for thy servant's sake, according to thy own heart, God's heart, 
a pure, merciful, sinless, perfect, holy, righteous heart. Hast thou done all this greatness and making known all these great things? Now look what David says. Thou hast done. It hasn't happened yet, but it has happened. As the wheels are already turning in David's family. David says, glory to God. And what great things you have promised to me and my family. And he doesn't realize as of yet, he doesn't have the, the thought of his head that the Messiah, the wanting coming one, is going to be of his family, in his family, and on his throne forevermore. O oh Lord, there is none like thee. Amen. Neither is there any God beside thee. You'll find that in Isaiah when we, Lord willing, when we get to that. So there's one God. There's one Lord, one God, Lord God. That's Jesus Christ. He's one with God. According to all that we have heard with our ears. Now look what God, look what David said. We know David knows the scriptures. We know David studied the scriptures. David said, what I've heard, what I've heard from temple service, what I've heard from the Levites, when I've heard your word being read to us, there is nothing but I've heard that God is wonderful, God is great, and God is one. And you look down to me, what, what, whatever I am, man, that's like, Bringing Israel out of Egypt. All the signs and wonders. What you're going to do with my family. What one nation. In the earth. Is like that people Israel. It's not America. It's not England. It's not China. It's the people of Israel. That's what the world hates. God's only chosen people are not them, but the Jewish people. And God says they're stiff net, they're rebellious, they're naughty, but they're my people. You curse them, I'll curse you. You bless them, I will bless them. Whom God went to redeem. Now look at him, put God third person. Whom God went to redeem to be his own people. What one nation has ever been like Israel? Then what one God has ever been to a, such a nation as Israel? What nation did God ever redeemed? He redeemed them by the blood of the death angel. When they went through Egypt that night, the firstborn. And God would later on tell Moses to tell the children of Israel, you're not going to sacrifice your firstborn sons. I have taken of the Levites to be the firstborn of your son. To be the sacrifice, the redemption of the children of Israel, the Levites. And you're not going to kill them. And every first of a cow, every first of an ox, every first of the sheep, and the, the, you don't put them to uh, you don't put them to plowing, you don't you don't shear that sheep. That is mine. The first thing of the ass thou should redeem with a lamb, thou you should break his neck. They were bought. And the Jewish people in the temple served for to give a certain amount of redemption money paid to God. That's where the men get, you know, buying God off. But we're not Levites and we're not Jewish people. Of greatness and terribleness, and that don't mean God's wicked and vile and nasty. You've seen the terribleness that we've read through the book of Exodus, what he did to, to the Egyptians, that he just caused fear and, and, and fright in them. And one time he gave them darkness that could be felt. That, that's, that's a terrible God. That's a terrible God. That, that terrible myth doesn't mean he's nasty. It means he inspired terror upon the people. What's he going to do next? At one point, the, the servants of Pharaoh came to Pharaoh and said, hey, get rid of them, will you? We're wasted. We're done. We're afraid. By driving out nations from before thy people, and that's in the land of Cana. When they came into Jericho, the, the spies, and they find Rahab's house, and the whole city shut, the whole city is scared of you and your God. 
uh, I forget what 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 they uh, what they were called, but the city there, uh, there are people of the land came to to uh, Joshua, and they're dressed in 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 a Hollywood costume. They've got uh, the merchandise and the implements of a, of a stage performance, uh, goods and stuff like that. And they say, you know, we just heard of your God. We don't want to be killed. We want to be friends with you. We want to make a league with you because your God inspires terror. That is not today. There is no fear of God before American eyes today. That's why this nation will fall. By driving out these nations before thy people. And that's Joshua, Judges, to a point. Whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt again. The God of Egypt. Who is the God of all gods? The God that led Israel out of Egypt. The God who took those lands in the land of Canaan and drove them out for the people of Israel. What's the God of America? What's the God of the United Nations? What's the God of England? What's the God of the Middle East? They say to the Jews, give up that land for us. It's not the God. For thy people Israel, didst thou make thy own people forever. How's how that? Forever. What are you going to do when people teach that God's all finished with the Jew? Forever. And thou, Lord, be Became is their God. That's your people. They, they're your, you, you are their God. Therefore now Lord. Let the thing that thou hast spoken. Concerning thy servant David. And concerning his house. Be established forever. And do as thou hast said. Let it be. Let it go forth. Now we have the realm of the seat of David. The throne going to Jesus Christ. Now watch Satan try to attack it. David stay home, stays home from a battle. Solomon with oppression and taxes builds that temple. Oh, 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 Rehoboam, if you just give him some little, uh, we, we need a little easement. We're just under a hard punishment government right now. And he goes to his teammates. He goes to his classmates. He opens up his yearbook and finds his friends and say, what shall I do? Just tell the people you think your father's bad. You wait till you see me on that throne. Split the entire nation. And the wickedness of the nations. Few good kings, many rotten kings. And, and Satan's trying to get that, that seed of David angry with God. And God will willing to say, that's it, Kaniah. I have had enough. I'm done with it, with David and his sons. Ah, that's it. God lied. All right, David, come in. Look at that. God lied to you. He said forever. My churches teach forever. Ah, no, God's all done with the Jews. For that's it. God lied. Isaiah says to a king, he says, "Ask him a sign." He says, ah, I'm not going to ask God. I'm too. I'm not going to ask God for a sign. I'll tell you what. God will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive seed, and shall bring forth a son. Virgin birth. Ha ha! There's David's family. Then time that 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 Gabriel came to Mary and said, "Thou shalt be with child." He said, "I haven't been with no man." He said, "That child shall be of David's throne. That child shall be forever settled upon the kingdom of the children of Israel forever. That child is born. The government tries to kill that child. About two years old. They're about as hot. He escaped. He went into Egypt. You didn't get him. The entire nation is mad at him. The, the religious people are mad at him. The people are mad at him. And they say, crucify him, crucify him. And they put him on a cross. He gives up the ghost. Says, Father, forgive him, for they know not what they do. And Satan goes, ha ha, David." Look at that lie. There's your great, there's your great, 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 great grandson. He's dead. I'm going to have him put a lock in a chain and, and troops outside of that tomb. David, your God is a liar. Three days and three nights, according to scripture, that rock rolls right away. Not rock and roll. The rock just pulls away. Jesus comes out victorious. 40 days, 50 days after that. He ascends to the Father, see at the right hand of the Father, and David now has seen, there he is, there he is. You ain't going to conquer Jesus now, and you can mess with Israel, you can put bombs in Israel, you can World War One, World War Two, World War Three. you can have the Arabians mad, you can Middle East mad, you can have Americans mad, England mad, you can have the United Nations mad. That land right now is possessed by all groups of people. 
And you're going to have seven years where Satan is going to rule. And Satan is going to chase that Jew. He's going to kill that Jew. He's going to try to de destroy the entire nation of Israel to say, God, look, you're a liar. Ah! Seven years, God. Look, I got them all. Son, yes. Take your bride, mount up, go get those Jews. All right, let's go. Do, 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 do. Pick them up, sell feature. There's a, there's a raiment of Jews there. Satan, you're the loser. Uh, angels, bind him up. Bind him up. For a thousand years, there's David, the prince. There's Jesus Christ upon David's throne in Israel. There's the temple. There's the temple service. There's the Jews. They are happy. The earth, the curse has been removed. A thousand years expire. Satan's unloosed. He gathers an army. Ha! Ah, God, you're a liar. <clears throat> you're dead. Like a fire. Heavens and earth fold up like a scroll. They melt with fervent heat. The, the great white throne judgment passes. New heavens and new earth. That new earth goes, there it is, there it is, there it is. Satan, you're the liar. Therefore, I know, Lord, let this thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant, concerning this house, be established forever and do as thou hast said. It's going to be done. It will be done. It's been a long, 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 long time, but one day it will be established forever. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever. Saying the Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even the God to Israel. And let the house of David thy servants be established before thee. For thou, O oh my God, and look at that. OMG, sin, repent. And this is not, oh, I'm in trouble. I need help. This is, wow. You're taking an expression of David's wildness. And yes, oh my God's using the Bible as, oh, I am in so much trouble. Help! David says, oh my God, how wonderful, how gracious hast thou told thy servant that thou will build him house. Therefore thy servant has found in his heart, David's heart, to pray before thee. Start in verse 16. Now, therefore, let it please thee, God, to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be before thee forever, and it will be. For thou blessest, make us happy, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever, and believe me, it will be. Now, the ones that don't do right in David's line, they go off into hell and burn forever. They'll go off in a lake of fire that burns forever, but those that did do right, they'll have the lasting comfort to be with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, the fathers of the children of Israel, Moses, Aaron, Elijah, Elisha, David, Mo, I already said Moses, and all the ones that did right. Imagine Solomon sitting one day and having a little conversation underneath a tree in the new earth. Say, well, tell me about rebuilding the temple. What did it look like, the temple that I built? And then come Jesus Christ come along and say, Jesus, tell us what that temple was right when Herod. And then they all speak, think about that, that millennial temple where Jesus was in there. And then you got the heavenly of all heavenly temple in, in heaven. The Ark of the Covenant, the Bible says, the book of Revelation, open up there. It is. It's in the book of Revelation, the, the altar of incense of the prayers. It's right there in heaven. There it is. There it is. Just waiting for those people. Waiting for us one day. 